And of course, the most important people in this room today, the graduates of the 40, 44th Regional Training Program on Gender Violence Against Women and Human Rights. So I'm very... Thank you. And all the trustees of the Crisis Center who are here also. I acknowledge you, all our NGO partners, uh, all the resource people who have been with us for the last four weeks, all very, very welcome. And I'm very excited, I'm very happy, because after COVID, four years later, we're having the 44th, number 44, RTP. There are many, many people here who have been through it. Saini Mili is here with us, she's been through it, and many other people who are in the room. I also want to acknowledge Elizabeth Cox, who is here with us. And I just want to say she is one of the main architects of the RTP and the network. And we've been very, very honored to have her here today. The last four weeks have been heavy going. We have here about 42 women, and of them there are four are men, very intrepid men, who have been here with us. And they come from all over the Pacific. I think 10 countries are represented. Uh, Fiji, of course, uh, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, uh, PNG, Papua New Guinea, West Papua, Samoa, we've got uh, Nauru, Cook Islands, yes, thank you, Moana. <laughs> Cook, how can I forget your headdress? <laughs> and uh, and uh, Kiribati and Tuvalu. Yeah, I haven't missed anyone? So, yeah, so we've got all people from there. Some of them who run Christ, and yeah, filling us here from Tuvalu, and from some from government agencies, and uh, some from crisis centers, some from well-established, long-established crisis centers, like, of course, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center, Vanuatu Women's Center, the Marilyn Tahi, some, I think many of you would remember her, We've got Family Support Center from uh, Solomon Islands, and... Uh, the, and Punanga Toturu from uh, Cook Islands. When we first had the first regional meeting, as you can see here, 1992, women put this, to, uh, uh, this up at, at that time. Uh, Cook Islands was the only other center that was responding to women who were survivors of violence. And now we have many, many, many of them. So, and then of course, you've got the ones who are just starting, Tuvalu, very enthusiastic, Samoa. We have uh, the brown girl woke. Oh, you have made it here. They haven't been very well. Uh, and uh, so they're here also. So we've got youth groups here as well as women's groups. We've got men who are working in this area and, uh, and so on. So very happy to have them all here. And uh, it's amazing that I've been teaching this since 1996. The first one was in 1966 with five women, one from Vanuatu, uh, one, two from Vanuatu, one from PNG, and two from Fiji. And now we have to tell people to wait for the next one. So, and this group here is about 42 of you. And so how the difficulties when we first started, when this was a new subject, no one talked, it wasn't new, but no one talked about it, to now it is so easy to teach and they, and they really exhausted me because they have so much to say. Not to listen to what I have to say, but so much to say, and so many ideas and so on. So that is just so, you know, when people say, uh, you know, uh, that what, what have you done? What has happened? This is what has happened. We might not be able to reduce the rate of violence because of everything else that happens, but the fact that people are speaking the same language, old and new, men and women, the same language about women's rights, about gender equality, equity, about ending violence against women, girls, and children. So that is what is new. That is what we, are, we have now from so many years ago, over 30 years ago when we first started. People talk about sustainability. And then we often think it's about financial sustainability. We might not have that. But I think those who have come before the last 40, 50 years and started this movement, that is what 
is going to be left behind. That is the legacy that people remember. And you know, as you know, we have, for the first time, the National Action Plan for the Prevention of Violence Against Women, and where, for the first time in a government document, patriarchy has been named as the cause, openly, freely, and no one had said, has said no. So I think that is a great achievement for the feminist women's movement. And, and of course, let's congratulate the government and uh, to have done that. Hard yards, but we are there now, and I'm sure the minister will be talking more about that. So having said that, we would also like to acknowledge our development partners, DFET, the New Zealand government, we also got ADB, who were able to sponsor. Pacific Women Lead, I must not, SPC, must not miss them out, who have sponsored everyone who's in this room to be able to attend, because that is the big hurdle, how to get people over here. So I acknowledge that, and also the long-term funding for crisis centers around the region, particularly DFAT. So one must acknowledge that, multi-year funding. We have our... We have our ups and downs, and so on. We're also teaching our development partners what partnership is, and so on. But we cannot take away, take away the fact that we are here, and we are, you know, being able, we are able to do so many things because of the support that we get from our partners like TFET and FET and others. So thank you very much, and I will not take up too much of your time, otherwise I'll start giving a lesson, because I'm so used to that. 